Hey, what is up, Warriors? It's the Quad Father here on Wisdom Wednesday, and I get to do a solo one today, and so I'm bringing the wisdom to Wisdom Wednesday all by myself. If you want to be featured on Wisdom Wednesday and have a shout out like these gentlemen did that I'm going to read here in a second, then you need to comment MLG down in the comment section below and you get a chance to have your name read on the next Wisdom Wednesday. From last week, we had guys commenting TBS because that's where the E-League is now on mainstream TV. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do three names. One is Double X Hank the Gamer, Double X. And then, ooh, this is a hard one. Er, 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 Arab, or er, E-R-I, Berto Ramirez. Erberto uh, Ramirez, thanks for the comment. And Pimplu, P-I-M-P-L-U-117, also commented TBS last week. And I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? Today, because I'm doing it by myself, because uh, Quad has to sleep, uh, I am throwing in a bonus one. Brayam Perez. Okay, so if you want to be featured in next week's Wisdom Wednesday, then just comment MLG because we're going to MLG Anaheim and uh, have your name featured. You can also comment down in this comment section below a question and also have another chance to be featured. We can keep you anonymous on that one if you'd like so that your question doesn't identify you as having a specific thing you want answers to. But we got three this week. And the first one is, is a, it's a mom-dad thing. And that's another reason that I'm doing this one on my own is, okay, so question number one. Caleb, please, I need advice. My mom and dad are fighting. What can I do? Well, uh, you know, that, that, that is a rough one because the, I know, I know. I've, I mean, I went through it some. My parents fought a little bit when I was growing up. Uh, my wife and I probably have are more uh, enthusiastic than my parents were, let's say. And because, uh, you know, we, we get into it. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, parents disagreeing or parents arguing. You say fighting. I like to make a distinction between fighting and arguing because fighting, to me, can mean two different things. It can mean just arguing, but it can also mean actually battling it out. And if they're physically battling it out, then uh, there's a lot more going on and you can have nothing to do with that. Also, even if they're arguing, okay, so, so say that you're, you know, down the hallway in another room, in the same room, and your, your parents are, are arguing. It's very uncomfortable, especially when they're kind of so into it that they're not even noticing you. So there's not much you can do because if you jump in the middle, oftentimes kids do, and that's what they start to distract, right? Or sometimes parents are in it so much, they'll draw someone else into it it's it's i don't want to get too deep but anytime two people have a disagreement they look for a third person okay to kind of balance this. it's called a triangle it's like a communication triangle to kind of balances things out you hope you get someone on your side and so if they're drawing you into it like that then the best thing you can do and i have to do this as a counselor all the time is stay out of it don't pick a side there is no win in that because when people are arguing or fighting they're usually not looking to understand or change their opinion they're looking to be understood right i just want you to hear me i'm going to talk louder and faster and interrupt you so that you don't get a chance to say what you what you need to say so even if you do see uh one person that you agree with like hey i agree with mom here or i agree with dad there stay out of it it is not going to help it is not going to help you're you're going to make uh, one friend and one enemy and in the end you'll be on your own now, fighting and arguing, I think, is, a, is actually a healthy part of relationship. It's, uh, hear me out. Hold on. Uh, because I have done many, many divorce sessions. As couples are getting ready to divorce, sometimes they come to me and, and I help them work some things out as they're getting divorced. And I've heard more than once in just the past couple months, people saying, you know what? We never really fought. We never really argued. And what the problem with that is, is you end up kind of taking it and taking it and taking it and agreeing and giving in and agreeing and giving in and you never represent or say what's going on for you so if you never do that you'll never fight you'll never argue you'll never uh, get in a disagreement which is great except for that kind of stuff builds up and builds up and builds up and eventually it ends up blowing up so these couples that i was talking to they never fought they never argued but they also never resolved any problems. So hopefully your parents are arguing in a way where they're actually resolving some problems, uh, but there's nothing you can do. It's not, even if they're arguing about you, it's not your fault. Parents can 
can uh, choose to be peaceable when they when they have a kid who is uh, giving them difficulties, and they can choose to blame each other or argue about different things. So there's really nothing you can do. I, if you can, just just move away from it. I know it's very traumatic when when uh, I would argue with my wife when the kids were younger. They were worried that we were getting divorced. It was like, no, we're just sorting out where we want to go on the weekend or why we don't want to go to this party or you know what we should do with our finances. There are things that you just have to figure out, and you're passionate about them, uh, so you you want to uh, to have a, a vigorous debate. Okay, so moving on, number two, I need advice on how to have lots of confidence. Wow. That, that is such a broad question. That's a big question. And it really, to be honest, the answer is different for every single person. But I will give a general one that, that, that has helped me. The big thing for me, because I don't, I mean, I get on a mic and I talk and, you know, I've, I've, I've grown, obviously. I, I, I work in psychology and, and uh, learn about people and learn about myself. And so I have gained confidence as I've gotten older. And it does take time. But the shortcut or the fastest way is to have confidence. What do you, what are you actually confident about? You know what I mean? Are there, are there areas of interest, things that you can talk about confidently? Are you secure in parts of yourself, like your sense of humor or your ability to complete a task or to, mainly it's to talk about something. So you're confident. I assume that you're also talking about around girls and that is simply practice. Simply practice. The, you know, the one thing that, that will really help you is, and this is true for any conversation or whatever, you have to remember, you're not the only person that's nervous, right? If you're going up and talking to a girl, she's got her heart rate, her heart is racing also. You know, she doesn't know what's going to go on. This is an unanticipated interaction if you're just starting to talk to her. And so you can't just, if you get stuck on focusing all on yourself, then you're not going to have confidence. You're going to be insecure. But if you start pulling yourself out of the actual conversation, meaning that you that you start looking at like, okay, well, what's she doing? She's fidgeting. She's looking uh, off to the side. She seems to be nervous. She, she's shifting her weight from one foot to the other. You know, she's twirling her hair. She's giggling at inappropriate times. If you start to look at the other person while you're talking to them, you'll realize that they don't have the confidence that you think they do. You know, you can't judge a uh, another person by comparing their outsides to your insides. And what I mean by that is and when you look around, you see other people and they appear to have confidence. You're looking at their outside, but you don't know what that internal thoughts are that are going on in their head. They are having some of the same self-conscious thoughts that, that we all have. And it's normal to be self-conscious and to kind of have less than a lot of confidence, I guess is the best way to say it. So just practice, practice, practice. This is the way that you have confidence at anything. So if you're talking about talking to girls, you have to push yourself and you have to jump in and have that conversation with other people over and over and over. So if you're talking about public speaking, then practice public speaking. If you're talking about talking to girls, then practice talking to girls. There's really no other way to have confidence. I mean, if you think about video gamers, okay, and being on stream and recording and trying to put up good gameplays, even on that, you can be nervous, but if you've played and practiced so much, you're like, dude, I've done this a hundred times. You know, so I, I, I may be a little nervous, which is normal, but I have a fair amount of confidence because I've been there and I've done this before. So the best thing is practice, practice, practice. When you're talking to girls, have a couple opening lines, nothing too, it's got to be personal. And it's got, also got to be like in the moment, like talking about something that, that just happened or something that you notice. And also a compliment is always nice. You know, starting off in the first few sentences of saying, hey, I really like those shoes, you know, or whatever. It has to be honest, so don't make something up. Uh, but, but yeah, a compliment helps to break some of the tension. All right, and on to number three. And don't forget, if you want to be featured on next week's episode, simply comment MLG down in the, in the comment section below or put your question in, and we will choose it to uh, be discussed on the next Wisdom Wednesday. So on to number three. How do you feel about Quad having friends on YouTube and the internet, and do you feel it helps or hurts his schoolwork and other chores? Whew. Uh, okay, first of all, how do I feel about Quad K? 
Caleb having friends on YouTube. I think it's great. At first, it was a little nerve wracking. And I think like any parent, it, it, you don't know who these people are, right? So all of a sudden, he's talking to guys on Skype or he's messaging, messaging them through Twitter or YouTube or the rest of it. And initially, parents, because we have history with the internet at first the internet was all about the creepy people now everybody's on the internet it's not just the creepy guys or the people who are trying to take advantage of you they're out there too so you always have to be cautious but because i've gotten involved in my kids youtube world and i've gone to events we've gone to pax we've gone to mld anaheim before we've gone to several paxes and i've gotten to know his friends i mean i i have their numbers and then we you know we really just more dm that's not like we're texting each other all the time I mean, they are teenage boys i'm not hanging out with them all the time but i do not have a problem with caleb having friends on youtube matter of fact i think if anybody's into building a youtube uh channel then i would suggest you get friends uh, that are doing the same thing because they will encourage you they will lift you up when you're down and you can lift them up when they're down and um you can celebrate the victories together so caleb having friends on youtube i think is great it's a little more difficult because you pick them from random places i mean this weekend we're going to mlg anaheim and there's going to be someone from canada someone from north carolina someone from ohio there and also someone from los angeles and those are just the people that i know in our little small group so i think it's great but it's hard to get together when you all live so far apart but in the virtual age we do Skype. We do uh, all other kinds of interaction. So it doesn't always have to be face to face. So I, okay, that's the first part. That's how I feel about him having friends on YouTube and on the internet. And do I feel it helps or hurts his schoolwork or other chores? Well, anything that can distract you from schoolwork or chores could be bad, but it's kind of like a cell phone. Cell phones can be really bad and distract you from everything. But if as now as a parent right that's my my rule here as a parent i'm like well it's another reinforcer it's another something that i can say hey look you do something wrong you lose your phone you do something you know uh you, you're you're distracted and you're not paying attention to your duties which is your school and your chores then you lose your phone or you could lose computer access time or posting or whatever so with caleb he has really used his youtube as a motivation to get the rest of the things he doesn't like as much like school and chores done so he's been able to use the the desire to post on youtube and to build this part of his career as a motivation to get that schoolwork done get it out of the way get those chores done get mom and dad off my back so they don't come in and say hey stop doing whatever you're doing you got to take out the trash or pick up your towel or all the other things that uh that, that fill up your day with with boring lame stuff to do well he gets that stuff done and out of the way so we don't hassle him so i think for caleb it's worked as a motivation i know there are other people who have put everything else aside in their life and let everything slack but that's just people who don't know how to prioritize and so Having a bunch of interests in, in Caleb's life, I think, helps him to be more organized and be more prioritizing. So if you made it this far, make sure you comment MLG. No, that was the last time. No, that's this time. Uh, comment MLG. And thanks to everyone for all the likes and all the ratings. We really appreciate it. So come back to Wisdom Wednesday. And I am the Quad Father. And I am out of here.